If you're in New Hampshire, or even New England now, you're in bear country. But you know, it always wasn't that way. I was the first black bear biologist uh, for fishing game beginning in uh, October of 1978. But let me give you a little bit of history about black bears in New Hampshire and really all across New England. Black bears were considered a varmint and uh, the state actually, beginning in the early 1800s, paid anyone a $20 bounty if you killed a bear. So there was an effort for almost, you know, over 150 years to kill off New Hampshire's black bears. And the same can be said for Massachusetts and, and Maine as well. So bears were considered non grata and were not very highly thought of. Well, uh, luckily, my supervisor, Henry Laramie, who worked at the Na for the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department, I think beginning in right after World War II, well, bears were bountied in New Hampshire, as I mentioned, and you know, a $20 bill in the 1800s, early 1900s, that was a lot of money, probably more money than you made in a month. So great effort would be made to kill any bears that they could find. But uh, so the bears were bounty until 1956, and I forgot to ask Henry, but I'd be willing to bet he had a lot to do with getting the bounty removed from black bears in New Hampshire. But you could still kill them year-round until the mid-60s, kill as many as you wanted until the 1970s. But here again, Henry, with his foresight, was thinking differently. In fact, by the mid-1960s, he was capturing nuisance bears, tagging and moving them. I bet he was the first one in North America to do that. And more importantly, he developed a tranquilizer that worked with bears. He would get a bear in a culvert trap or a trap and get a hold of his good friend, Dr. Jim Payne, a veterinarian uh, from Concord, and Jim would go with him and they would try different tranquilizers until one seemed to work the magic and kept the bear out for a good half hour or more. And uh, to this day, that drug or a concentrated, uh, a concentrated form of it is being used around the world to tranquilize bears. So bear tranquilizing successfully started right here in New Hampshire by Henry Laramie. But what Henry found, and as I was the first black bear biologist, that uh, the majority of his nuisance tag bears were dead within a couple of years, like 75%. So we were kind of wondering, wow, is, is, are all the bears being killed off at that rate? And, uh, and uh, that would not be a good thing. So by the early uh, 1980s, uh, uh, we were, you know, wondering, or late 70s, wondering, what, you know, I wonder what the actual mortality rate is for true wild bears. So as part of my bear research here in New Hampshire, I began to tag non-nuisance bears. And how I did that? Well, I actually worked with the New Hampshire Bear Hunters Association. This is a group of houndsmen that was formed about then or, and who uh, trained dogs to tree bears you know, you know, for the hunting season, but also through the summertime, they would uh, tree bears to train their dogs. And they were very conservation-minded. They certainly wanted to uh, to make sure our bears survived in good numbers. So I would go, and beginning in 1979, I would go up every other weekend, beginning in, uh, in July, and uh, uh, we would, I would go up and meet with a group of houndsmen from the New Hampshire Bear Hunters Association, and they would, uh, they would tree bears and give me a call, or they would call each other on their uh, their CBs and oh I got a bear up a tree send Eric over so over I would go to uh, fire a tranquilizer dot into the bear and get it out of the tree and tag it and let it go and we were not putting radio calls on then just tagging them to see what percentage of true wild bear were being taken by hunters well my diary here says it was a, a Saturday August 25th 1979 that uh, this event happened now if you look at back at probably in my mind, 100 or 150 years of history, I think, in my mind, I can only recall four times in New Hampshire that anybody has ever been bitten or, or injured by a black bear. Just so happens, I've been a witness to two of those four events. So let me tell you about this one. So uh, Bruce Carnes and uh, Charlie Foote uh, had... Uh, run a bear up a tree in Sugar Hill, New Hampshire. And it was uh, you know, late morning, I think I remember, and uh, it was a good-sized bear, over 300 pounds, according to my diary here. 
So I remember uh, walking in and the hounds were, had the bear treat and then they would tie off the hounds so when the bear came out of the tree they wouldn't bite it or harass it. So they had the hounds tied off or whatever and the bear was up not that high, maybe 30 feet up the tree or 25 feet. So I fired a dart at the bear but the dart hit a branch and ricocheted off. So I said, oh, I got another one. I kept a spare right in my pocket. So I put that in my tranquilizer gun and fired it at the bear. And the bear, the actual dart malfunctioned. The, it kind of blew up. By then, yeah, we got a mad bear up a tree. So I said, clear the tree. But before we could get very far, the bear jumped out of the tree. Charlie Foote was, was here at my left with an arm's reach. It came out and knocked Charlie down, which, you know, knocked him down. I went over to pick Charlie up and I could see that in his left arm were big holes. The bear, it wasn't spurting blood, but it was certainly dripping blood. So I took out a hanky and we wrapped his arm and he, uh, Charlie is a very jovial person. The minute you meet him, you'd like him. So Charlie was chuckling already and we spent the, you know, 20 minutes or a half hour walking out of the road back to the truck. This is where things actually go downhill. To that point, you work with bears, somebody might get bitten, even a volunteer. So Charlie headed off to the hospital in Haverhill and I headed off hoping to tag a successfully a bear that day. Well, <clears throat> that was, that was uh, a Saturday and uh, lo and behold, Charlie Berry was the director of fishing game at the time. He lived up that way up in Haverhill. And uh, wouldn't you know it, Charlie Foote is even being sewed up in the emergency room. I think it was like 27, 28 stitches. And simultaneously, or just after, Charlie's Barry's daughter broke her arm, but she couldn't get into the emergency room because somebody was being sewn up after being bitten by a bear. And Charlie, I heard afterwards, turned to the person and said, well, that didn't happen in New Hampshire, or I would know about it. He didn't. So that was Saturday, and uh, come Monday morning, guess what? I get a call from the director's office. Charlie Berry wants to see me. Now Charlie and his dad, who was a game warden before him or CEO, they weren't too keen on bears anyway, so he wasn't real thrilled with the bear study to begin with. Having somebody being bitten, well, that didn't make him very happy. In fact, when I went in there, he was... He said I had some explaining to do, and so I did, and I thought it was going quite well, and then I said something. You know, sometimes words get out of your mouth, and you don't know why you said them, but you did. Well, those two words for me that morning were, so what? Oh, he was a bit crimson already from the experience, and that definitely lit him up a little bit more. And then after a while, he calmed down, and I promised I would let him know if I he had anybody else chewed up by a bear, and and uh, things kind of worked out. But uh, and so that's uh, that's what happened that Saturday. This bear uh, chewed up one guy. Now about a year and a half ago, I hadn't seen Charlie in the, in the meantime. About a year and a half ago, I've been I've been working since I retired from fishing game in 2007 for the National Wildlife Federation, and I was doing a uh, a sportsman show from them right up here at the uh, a church in Concord. One, uh, one April day, a snowy April day as I recall, and who comes through the door of the room I was at but Charlie Foote. <laughs> I had not seen this jovial fellow for all those years and uh, he came up to me and of course we recognized each other and the first thing he did was take his jacket off and uh, show me his scars and he was actually said, hey, I am quite proud of this bear scar, these, this uh, arm because uh, you know, not everybody in New Hampshire has ever been bitten by a bear before. So, Charlie took it well. Charlie Foot took it well. Charlie Berry, not so well. But right today, we have more bears across the Northeast, more bears in Massachusetts, more bears in Connecticut and Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont than there have been since before colonial times. There's over 5,000 bears. The current estimate is 5,500 compared to 1,000 when I started. So, yes, you are in bear country. But you know what? Unless you're messing with a bear, you probably won't get bit. In fact, I keep, I've keep i told people, I've given hundreds of lectures on bears, and I always say, you know, you got a better chance with every bear in New Hampshire than probably with your significant others, because bears 
are very shy and they want to be left alone. And uh, so our bears are thriving and I survived that whole incident. Oh yeah, I said two, I know of two people who were bitten by bears. Hmm. Yeah, I was the other one, but I'll save that story for another day.